Winning national championships this year. He's going up against old school's Gary McKenna in the blue corner. McKenna in the blue, filling him the army man in the red. Both getting straight to the action. Putting him jabbing first. You really want to establish that jab and then work off it. Kenner applies at landing a jab of his own. Busy start from both. They haven't spent too long trying to feel one another out. bruising and marking off on the left eye of uh, Finnegan, presumably from previous bout, either yesterday or the day before, as that accumulated punishment will leave a few sore heads Monday morning. Just a marker, isn't it, that you pick up wear and tear day by day when you're boxing back to back. So only really got the night to recover, and that often only be a few hours really if you box late you've got to get up again to weigh in and then try and rest until you compete I suppose an important microcosm of the, the bigger tournaments that some of these boxers will go on to compete in having to box at short notice with only maybe a day's rest in between and multiple weigh-ins so not just the experience they gain from having multiple number of bouts in a short space of time but just the format of the competition as well absolutely yeah and that's what the box cup like this really helps those boxers with international ambitions this gives them a taste of the format of international competitions that you didn't often you didn't you didn't used to get too often in england though actually the sort of later stages of the national elite championships have caught up and is now structured like this box cup day after day so filling them here is starting to bring in some powerful straight right crosses a bit of blood from the man from the Army boxing team in red. As I say, landing some good shots. Over the years, actually, the Army has produced some outstanding boxers. Particularly at lightweight a few years ago. Martin Stead was the Army lightweight. You know, I think won three ABA national titles back to back. Even got a win over Tom Stalker, GB captain at the last Olympics. Really? Good company. Filling him here. Proving his worth as well. Crashes that left hook into the body, and that got to have stung. McKenna took it well. Just shoves. Filling him over, and a wry smile from the man in the red corners. A fair bit of blood on the, the face there. The referee just dusting those gloves down, and they go to their corners. End of first round, the senior eight, 60 kilo. Men's final. Fillingham's nose is bleeding, isn't it? Really is, yeah, and they've got to do a bit of work on that. But maybe we can just push him over at the end, perhaps more a sign of frustration. And there he's taking some instructions, filling him in his corner. from the nose now been wiped off and no sign of it anymore but it was uh, pretty profusely in both nostrils there it is at least there's not as much of a problem to say a cut over the eye and there the blood can obscure your vision or even the swelling mm. they will say a cut under the eye is the ideal place to have it if you're going to have it better off trying not to though oh, absolutely Even though they're lightweights, they've got some power, don't they? Well, absolutely. And both uh, quite flat-footed, and they stand and trade. And both seem happy to do so. Loading up with some nice short to mid-range work. But a great deal of holding. It's good work, this, from both. 
problem seeing a bit of inside work and nice rolling and throwing hooks to the body. Can you say a bit more full blooded than the work we've seen in some of the previous contests. He's brought some body shots in now. Both putting a lot into this round, actually. So fitness and stamina could become factors. This one, three three minute rounds. And as you say, high volume from both men. Filling him just bobbing and weaving, throwing some hooks to the body, and then pops a few from McKenna in return. And they are just planting themselves in the middle of the ring, but moving their bodies and just well, <laughs> they can slug it out. It's more attritional, this, isn't it, than some of the technical bouts we've seen. Both boxers seem to prefer it that way. It doesn't seem that they've been, either one has been forced into it particularly. Kind of rock filling him back to the ropes there for a moment. Filling just pushes his way forward just to get away, get clear. There's an eye catching right hook from McKenna. Or oh, head catching technically. <laughs> you see filling and just trying to clear the nostrils there. And a lot of blood coming from there. Can restrict the breathing. Again, both bobbing and weaving, similar stylistically, really. Yeah, but quite an entertaining blend because they're just standing there and going for it. But, you know, there's some very talented lightweights in Britain and Ireland. You'll see with the sort of, you know, the best of the best, the champions, there's more mobility, more moving around the ring. Say Luke McCormack is the top English lightweight at the moment. A real slick, classy operator. Someone to look out for, actually during the qualification period for Rio 2016 or even Tokyo 2020. Is Luke out in Azerbaijan at the he, Europeans? He is out in Azerbaijan at the moment. So we keep in close eye on him out there. Meanwhile, in London, Ryan Filligan and Gary McKenna are putting on quite a show for those ringside. There's a nod of acknowledgement from Fillingham as they uh, ended that round as if to say, this is a good old slug. It could well be everything to fight for in the third and last round. Now here we go, the 10 second message delivered to both corners. We now meet in the centre of the ring. Final bout between Ryan Filligan in the red corner, Gary McKenna in the blue. And one of whom will be crowned the 60 kilo Haringey Box Cup champion. like this whoever's kind of grinding their way forward onto the front foot even if they're both landing could just be what impresses the judges and nice right hook landing from Gary McKenna now filling in returns fire a tough one to score for the judges because both men are throwing both men standing there neither's really been pushed back particularly more than the other both have landed shots a nice 
nice right hand off the back of that exchange with Gary McKenna digging into the body. It's every now and again in this round, McKenna's just got in one of those flush, thudding shots. And as Fillingham steps back into range, McKenna just catching him on the way back in. That's better head mm. movement for Fillingham. Then a nice left and right hand lands from him. Real to and fro encounter. Not long to go now in this third and final round. Draws to a close. just telling him to watch the heads whether we'd see some tired legs and arms if they kept up this punch output at the beginning of the first round and as it's progressed they've just both maintained this so a real testament to both boxers fitness and conditioning yeah they've really poured in the effort just loads of punches going in big left hook from Fillingham but some kind of comes back throwing more and more well terrific Terrific encounter between these two young men. An uh, attritional slugfest, you might call it. And uh, it's going to be a very, very tough one for the judges to score. I wouldn't like to put any bets on it. Great work from men in both corners, I'm sure. Whichever earns the gold medal, they would have both earned each other's respects in the ring. Yep, whoever wins it has really had to work for it. So we will get the decision imminently. So Dan O'Sullivan there, the bottom of your screen, just collating the judges' scorecards and having the final information confirmed. Boxes will then be brought to the centre. Respect in Ryan Finnegan, a worthwhile winner. 